What will people think when it comes to doing things like performing in a soccer game, taking a big test, maybe giving a speech? These four words can have a big impact on the way that we view that task. So in this episode, in this video for our watchers on YouTube, we're going to be talking about how you can rethink the way you look at performance-based tasks in order to focus on learning, focus on growing and even helping others. So let's get started. Positive Choices is a social and emotional learning curriculum for families and for schools. It uses the latest brain research to teach important social skills so families and schools can thrive. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I want to begin this episode by telling you a story about my year teaching kindergarten, one of my years. And there's something called mini observations. This is when teachers are observed by their principals and their administrators. The goal is to learn from these experiences. And I know personally, there was one day when my principal came into my classroom and my kids had just finished eating snack. And I don't know if you know about fruit roll-ups. Kids love them. This is like the coveted snack. This is the best thing that you could ever receive in a kindergarten classroom for snack according to the kids for teachers, not so much. So a really nice family donated these fruit roll-ups and the kids were so happy. And at first I was experiencing this joy, seeing them so happy. And then I saw the negative piece. The kids were just getting to the end of their fruit roll-up and now they had this long piece of trash. And some of them were turning these into lassos and swinging them above their heads. Some kids were crawling on the ground, you know, playing with it, picking up trash, acting like cats. This is literally what it looked like in my classroom one day. And snack took a little bit longer. Needless to say, the um, fruit roll-up lassos were taking up some time. And my principal comes in. We're supposed to be at the carpet doing math at this point. And as she walks in, the only thing I could think was, oh my gosh, What is she thinking right now? Like, how does this reflect on me seeing a group of kids who were wild and throwing trash above their heads? Um, My principal is amazing. And you should know that she just came in and she's like, gave a look and she said, not today. And I'm like, gave her thumbs up. Yep. Now's not a good time. But that feeling, that feeling of, oh my gosh, I need to perform. I need to look good. That is something that teachers and I know parents and everyone can relate to. And so today we're going to talk about how you can rethink situations where you could either focus on other people's perceptions and have more of a perfectionist mindset, or you could have a different approach. You could approach a situation with curiosity and how can I learn? What can I do better? What can I um, improve in this experience for next time? Last week, we talked about stress and how stress is a very normal and necessary part of our human experience. And stress can be a catalyst for a couple of things. It can be a catalyst for worry. And this is a chain of negative thoughts about bad things that might happen. But stress can also be a catalyst for calm. Brene Brown calls this creating perspective and mindfulness while managing emotional reactivity. And this actually leads to optimal performance and health. And so When we think about performance tasks, these are any learning activity or assessment that asks students or individuals to perform to demonstrate their knowledge, understanding, and proficiency. I teach classes at Oregon State University in the graduate program, and so we have a whole chapter about what a performance task is and how teachers can pick meaningful activities and assessments to really get a good feel for where their students are at with their understanding and their mastery. And so while performance tasks are important for us to understand where kids are at with their learning, there's also a piece that's really, it's an opportunity for us to help kids understand what it means to approach a performance task with a growth mindset and with a level of curiosity. That way they're not experiencing that stress, the negative worrying stress. Like I felt when my principal came in and saw the mass chaos, but rather they can practice self-compassion and say, you know what? Today's not the day for a mini observation, or you know what? Today was not my best performance in this soccer game or this math test. I really need to study more. So just having self-compassion and approaching these situations with curiosity, 
these are going to be things that can last a lifetime on through adulthood as people are entering the workforce and they're showing up and doing presentations for their boss and and pitching ideas at different meetings. How can we adopt this curiosity mindset that allows for deep learning and ultimately authentic mastery? You can put it in perspective. And this gets to the whole concept of perfectionism and curiosity. So rather than thinking, what will people think when I fill in the blank, play the soccer game, when I do this Ted talk or give this presentation, instead you can reframe performance tests as opportunities to learn. So as we consider this, we need to examine two emotions or experiences, and that is curiosity and perfectionism and curiosity asks, what will I learn? Whereas perfectionism asks that question of what will they think in Atlas of the heart, Brene Brown does an excellent job of juxtaposing both curiosity in one chapter. And then she talks about perfectionism. And she says in her book that choosing to be curious is choosing to be vulnerable because it requires us to surrender to uncertainty. In kindergarten, you never know what's going to (laughs) happen. There is a high degree of uncertainty when you're getting ready to teach any lesson when your principal walks in. So when you choose to be curious, going back to her quote, you are choosing to be vulnerable because it requires us to surrender to uncertainty. She says we have to ask questions and admit to not knowing, risk being told that we shouldn't be asking, and sometimes make discoveries that lead to discomfort. And so when we are vulnerable and we decide, you know what, I need to ask a question and you're risking that feeling of maybe someone saying that you shouldn't be asking that, or you should already know that it is beautiful when you choose curiosity, because that's, what's going to lead to learning with perfectionism. On the other hand, she says that perfectionism kills curiosity by telling us that we have to know everything or we risk looking less than. So when you start to think, what is a way that we can reframe this negative feedback loop, this thought that I have to perform to look good. Otherwise I I risk um, looking less than when we change that thought of what will they think to what will I learn? That is where we can make the shift. Now, another thing you can tell yourself, something that I tell myself whenever I go into, whether if I'm um, teaching or if I'm doing some coaching where I'm in the classroom and I'm teaching a lesson here, teachers are looking at me and I am the social emotional coach coming in. And I could have the mindset of here I am coming in to teach a lesson about problem solving. What if someone punches someone in the face right while I'm teaching that lesson, Um, rather than focusing on that and letting that stop me, I tell myself, I say, I'm here to learn. It's like my mantra. I'm walking in with my coaching bag and, or I'm coming up on stage with my little um, lapel microphone clipped on. I tell myself, I am here to learn. And not only that I'm here to learn is important, but the second thing to add on is I'm here to help because for me, that's where the meaningful aspect comes in with the work that I do. Not only am I showing up to learn, but if I'm able to focus on who it is that I can help, I'm someone coming into this position to hopefully make a difference for at least one person, then that takes the pressure off. It doesn't matter how good I look. If I'm able to help one person to shift the way that they see things to make them feel more valuable and to have a a more positive outlook on life, that alone is incredible. So something that you might consider as you go about your day or week is considering When you have a situation where you start to feel that, oh, what are people thinking of me, (laughs) right? I need to look good. I need to perform. Pause, (sighs) take a deep breath, bring awareness to the fact that you're having this thought, welcome it. That's okay. I see that you're there and you can pivot and say, you know what? I am here to learn and I'm here to help. Who can I help in this situation? And here's the thing. When you start to internalize this, And as you say things like, you know what, I'm here to learn. (laughs) I remember telling my class on one occasion, they were, um, they had a lot of sugar. Again, this is another moment of where sugar impacted things. A student had his birthday. And so his grandma brought in a bunch of cupcakes and there was like that much frosting. It was jumbo cupcakes. Like, I don't know if these were from Costco or what, but I 
definitely probably should have cut them in half or into quarters. Anyway, my class had a lot of sugar and here we are walking down the hall and I'm taking them to music. And my principal is there to do an observation on the music teacher, (laughs) her observation. And as I'm dropping them off, I just mouth to her. Like I say, they just ate cupcakes. I'm sorry. Like I just knew they were going in there with a lot of energy. And so um, I told the class afterward, I said, how did it feel when you were in music? Um, what was that like for you? What did you learn? And some students said, we learned about the maraca or whatever instrument it was. We learned how to play this and our brains were super mixed up. And one of my students who was very insightful said, Mrs. Mrs. Um, and she said our principal's name. Um, she was watching us and she was looking at how our teacher was learning. And I love that because she knew that she had heard me say enough times, oh, the principal comes in because she's she's here to help me learn. So my students were able to identify that someone with a clipboard meant that it was time for me to learn. So I hope that you have an excellent week. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Positive Choices Podcast. And I just hope that you experience more opportunities to focus on learning, to focus on creating a sense of curiosity and meaningful striving, healthy striving, and that you're able to let go any tendencies toward perfectionism and be mindful of who's around you so that you can be here to learn and that you can show up to help. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will talk with you soon. Bye.